is we're going to talk about the fundamental counting principle. And so this is just saying if you have something where you have more than one choice. And on this one, the very first example says if you have three pants and two shirts, how many possible outfits could you have? And if you see over to the right hand side, it does tell you, if you're looking right here, the first thing that you have to decide from is you have three options for pants. And then if you choose the first option for pants, you then have two options for shirts, the same thing there. So it tells you six possible outfits. And so whenever you have, however many combinations you have, um, you're simply just going to multiply those. So this actually can work for multiple things. So if you look at that first example, all right, it says we have three English courses, five math courses, and two different art courses, and four different history courses. How many different ways could a student choose each type of course? So basically, like, how many schedules can you build? So on that first example with the shirts and the pants, we simply multiplied the number of shirts times the number of pants. Now here, how many different courses are we talking about? We've got English, we've got math, we have art, and we have history. So we have four different courses, but each course, think about this, how many English courses do we have? How many do we have to pick from? Three. Three. How many math courses do we have to pick from? five how many different art courses and how many different history courses all right so we simply it doesn't matter if it's two choices four choices whatever we multiply all the choices together so what is three times five times two times four it is 120 different ways or different schedules that could be built. All right, so I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this realistically with the high school. Um, just tell me, how many different English classes do we offer? What do you mean? Like, like the writing class? Yeah. yeah. All right, so your freshman year, how many options of English classes did you have? Two. Two. You had English 9 or English 9A. How many options did you have as a sophomore? Two. 10 or 10A. How many did you have as a junior? Two. Two. 11 or 11A. What about your senior year? Four. Three. Does have a different set? Two. Then Audrey? You have Mrs. Gregg's. Mrs. Sorry. But, yeah, you have English... You have English 12, and you have English 12A, or which hers are the ISU class. So just in English, you have eight classes. Did you guys know that we have English electives as well? Besides, those are the required ones. Do you guys know that we have a film literature class? Where you talk about movies based on books, and you read the book, and then you watch the movie? Um, it honestly if you have room in your schedule I'd recommend taking it um, did you guys know that yearbook is an English class so just there we have 10 English classes now let's think about math how many, algebra 1 we don't it's just algebra 1 now in algebra 2 do you have options yeah, you have 2 and 2a what about geometry Mm -hmm. There's geometry and geometry A. Then we have stats. We have pre-cal and trig, calculus, quantitative reasoning, and that's all. Oh, well, technically we have algebra labs for freshmen. So technically we have 10 different math classes offered here at the high school. So we got 10 English, 10 math. Now think about history. What are some history classes that you got? Think about things that you've taken either with Mr. Simmons, Mrs. Wagaman, Mrs. Norris. Geography. Geography. 
World History. Juniors, what are you taking this year? U.S. History. US history but that can either be regular, dual credit, or AP. AP Euro with Mrs. Norris. And then what are you guys going to take next year with Mr. Simmons, juniors? Yeah. Government and Econ. All right, so that's eight. So if you start thinking about this, we just talked about English, math, and history. We haven't even discussed science. We haven't discussed ag. We haven't discussed technology. We haven't talked about business. We haven't talked about the classes you can take with Mrs. Cross. So just think, do you think Mrs. Couch has an easy time building the schedule for the next school year? Because every kid gets all of these different choices. Now one thing that's nice is you know some of the classes the core classes you can't really change like so it does kind of shorten down the possible schedules because you're definitely going to be in an English math probably a science um, things like that but those are just I want you guys to think about that because that is something Mrs. Couch is working on right now and I know do you guys ever wonder why you start scheduling your classes for next year in February because she has to make sure that there's no scheduling conflicts because you know, say I'm trying to think of things that like can't be together um, so this is one AP stats and AP we try to keep calculus stem or calculus AP chem and AP stats all in different class periods so that way if anybody wants to take both of them they can um, for the longest time if you were a golden arrow singer you couldn't be in certain classes because golden arrow singers is only offered one period a day um, same thing with like arrowettes and band I don't know so we do have some limits on schedules but these are just talking about some different choices now this is something that probably will affect everybody at some point in time in your life do you guys for those of you that drive do you actually know your license plate number letters combination I don't say mine is 812 LKY and I hope it never ever changes because it's really easy to remember hey how much does it cost to get your license plate changed to what you want it to be like to customize it yeah I don't even know in Indiana if they do the custom plates anymore well, I was behind a Tesla the, like a month ago, and the license plate was gas hat. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it could be cool. They do do it. Oh, I was just kidding. <laughs> Illinois that I know. And it's the it's Quinn Miller. And oh, Illinois. Everybody in Illinois customizes their plates. I think that's like a free thing because... Like Zach's grandparents were all from Illinois and like they all had customized plates like I think in Illinois it's different than in because license plates are state to state and they have different rules okay I need to lighten this up a little bit I don't know what why do you have to have two license plates I don't know all right can you why is that not showing up it looked fine earlier All right, so let's talk about license plates for just a second. And I'm sorry that the license plates are not showing up as well as they should. But if you are looking at this, it's talking about the different ways that you can um, create license plates. Now, we have two different styles here, a 2004 style and a 1912 style. Now, the first thing I want you to decide, we got to fill in this blank. So, a lot of license plates are a combination of numbers and letters. So, let's just think about digits. How many possible digits can you use to create a license plate? Six. Digits. Numbers. Uh, For any license plate, any license plate in the world. No. Digits, single numbers. Nine. Four. Uh, you're close, Nathan. It's not nine. Eight. 
Ten. Okay. Where do you think 10 comes from? There are 10 possible digits. Let's write that in. All right, so on a license plate, the reason why it's 10, obviously, do you guys agree that 1 through 9 would be options? Yes. You can also have a 0. So 0 through 9 gives you 10 digits. Now, how many letters are there in the alphabet? 26. All right, so let's talk about this first license plate, and I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Can you guys, why will that not show up? I'm going to switch. I'm really not liking technology today. So I know that that's hard for you um, to see, but that's better than what it was. So this very first license plate, if you look at this, um, the we have three letters. So for each letter, on license plates, is it okay to have a repeat letter or number? Yeah. Yeah, it is okay. So for this one, each letter has its own choice. So I want you guys to write underneath this description, I want you to put three blanks. Letter one, letter two, and letter three. How many choices do we have for letter one? How many letters are there in total in the alphabet? All right, so your first letter, you have 26 possible there's 26 possible choices for that first letter. Now we said it's okay to have repeats, right? Yeah. So how many choices do we have for the second letter? 26, how many do we have for the third one? All right, then the third part, or the second half is the digits. Digit one, digit two, digit three. Now how many choices do you have for digits? Nine. Not nine. Yeah. 10 because you have to include zero. So we have 10 choices for each one of the digits because repeats are okay. So if you multiply all of these numbers together, so we're gonna take 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10. It gives you a pretty big number. Do you guys get 17,576,000 when you multiplied? Yeah. All right, so what this is telling us is that state could make 17,576,000 different license plates. Now, if you go back to where they were in 1912, they only had digits. They didn't have letters. Do you guys think that that's a good idea or a bad idea? Good. Why do you say that? Okay. You're going to say, why do you think over time they started putting letters in? Because so many people get their license. Hmm? Because they ran out of numbers. Okay. Because they. You can only use 10,000. So if there's four, if there's four like numbers, mm -hmm. you just 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. Yeah. So if you have four numbers, it's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10,000 plates. 
Do you think in the state of Maryland they have more than 10,000 drivers or 10,000 vehicles registered? Now, in 1912, do you think they had that many? No. But over time, of course in 1912 this was probably okay because they probably did have 10,000 drivers or less or 10,000 cars to register. But over time, obviously the number of drivers have increased the population just in general has increased and so therefore you have to get a little bit more creative now has anybody wondered why I have license plates up there yeah. like has anyone noticed those license plates they've been up there for like a week yeah, we talked about it. They're all Indiana. okay they are all Indiana plates <coughs> so they are not from my vehicle they were donated to me most of them came from Knox County and the reason why I know that is because there's a 42 on almost every single plate. Does anybody know what Sullivan County's numbers? 77. How do you think our numbers are assigned? It is every county has their own number somewhere on their license plate. But how do you think why are we 77? Why is Knox County 42? Why is Vigo County it's like 82 or 84? It's not population. Um, when I lived in Montgomery County, my license plate was 54. Where's that at? Crawfordsville. Is that in Illinois? No, it's in Indiana. Um, Green County, their number is 28. Gibson's is 26. So Gibson and Green are really close together. Sort of. Huh? There we go, Kobe. They are in alphabetical order. So there are 92 counties in Indiana. And they are arranged. So for license plates, it's alphabetical. Well, like Did you guys really not know this? No. No, I, like, I do like Mm -hmm. Alright, so let me flip the camera so people at home can watch this too. Uh, let's see. Alright, so I want to talk about these license plates up here. First of all, these are all license plates from my lifetime. And let's see, this one was first. And then this one was second. And this one was third. third. Alright, so this was a license plate whenever I was a kid. And I always, my mom, my parents always had truck plates and I really wanted one of these license plates because they were pink and I thought they were cool. But if you look at this, um, for this first plate, this 42 was the county number. So if you're getting a license plate and the first two numbers start with your county, you really have a choice on what that number is. No, so these first two, they were pretty much locked in because it was their county number. So then we had four digits. So that's kind of like the 1912. So for these four digits, how many choices did we have for each one of these digits? Ten. Ten. You're saying, am I leaving anything else out on this plate? What's the C stand for? All right, the C, no. Sometimes they were different. Sometimes they were A's, B's, C's. It just depended. So for the most part, you never saw anybody besides A's, B's, and C's, but they created this letter. So when they ran out of 77 A choices, then they went to 77 B. And then when they ran out of 77 B, then they started making 77 C's. And then when they ran, ran out of those places, then they started making the ones with the D. So how many choices do you really have there for the letter? Three. I mean, technically, we probably never saw one that had a Z, but how many choices do you you really had 26. So then that gave the state 20, or each county, 26, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 
Hanford County. So how would we find out the amount per state that's allowed? I told you how many counties are in Indiana. 92. Take this times 92 for me. What is 260,000 times 9? 23,920,000. 23, 23,920,000. Yeah. Any zeros? Yeah. All right, so this is per, for the whole state. Do you think in Indiana we have more than 23 million registered vehicles? Yeah, I'd say somewhere in the way. Well, I mean, just think about, like, in my driveway, I have three registered vehicles. Yes, we do. I mean, I have three registered vehicles at my house. I don't even know how many my parents have. I, my parents have tons of vehicles, but I don't know if they're all registered. My dad has a business. So. All in all 92 states? In all 92 counties. Do you think that that's enough for the state to cover it? Yes. It is not. Yeah. It is not. Uh, so, and if you guys can see, this is just a style change. Do you see anything different as far as the combinations here and here? No, that was just a style change. This was, I can't even remember, there was a reason why they changed it to this one, and I can't remember why. Something, it was like a, something with the anniversary of the state of Indiana, and they changed it to this uh, Indiana plate that looked more like the flag. But then they changed it to this. And on this one, this had nothing to do with the county. This was the first time that they did this. So whenever they changed it to this style, these digits were unique and this letter was unique. So do you think that that gave us more possibilities or less? All right, so let's think about the first two digits. How many choices do we have for those? 10 and 10. How many do we have for this letter? And then these three numbers. How many choices do I have for each number? So then this gave us, and that was for the entire state, 26, and then add five zeros. It's actually a lot less. So why would they do that if it was less? Why would they do that if it was less? All right, so I know this sounds really crazy, but at this point in time, they started classifying license plates a lot different. Uh, at one point in time, you basically just had regular plates and you had truck plates. This was the time where they really started adding, I guess, like the personalization on plates. You know, say, does anybody in their family have like a plate that has like a sports team or some sort of, like I see a lot of like, they have the Riley plates. Like it'll say like the Riley, hot like you can get Riley hospital plates, Colts plates. I really want Purdue plates. Um, I think you should get hmm? I think you should get No, I have no connection to Notre Dame. That's the one there. <coughs> it's the most expensive school in Indiana. No, but at this point in time, this was the time whenever people really started doing the customized plates. They existed before, but I don't know why. They became really popular about this time. Like everybody started getting teams like for colleges and different things. So therefore they didn't need as many just basic plates because they started branching out and having more types. And so it did expand just a little bit, but then, and then they switched to this for the basic plate. So obviously this wasn't the best choice because this one changed really quick. Like this plate didn't last very long. I had this plate, 
I'm trying to think when I first got my license, this was the plate I had. And so that was my junior year of high school. By the time I went to college, I had one of these. So I don't know why it switched so quick, but I think it's because they ran out. But if you look at this, we now have two letters, four numbers. So how many choices do I have for each letter? 26 for each letter, and then each number has how many choices? All right, so we would need to take 26 times 26, and then times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. So what does that give me for my number of choices? 26 times 26, which is 676, and then times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. gave them almost three times as many choices. So what are some things besides license plates that you guys can think of that have like labels associated with these? You know, say, how many of you guys have permits or driver's license? What does everybody have? You have a driver's license number. All right, what's another number that's attached to you for your social security number. Don't tell me what that is. That's, I will tell you, once you are 16, you really need to know what your social is. You use it for a lot. Like when you get a job and you fill out tax papers, do not make your parents fill out your tax papers. Let them assist you, but fill out your own stuff. Um, you guys will need, if you plan on taking any dual credit classes through Ivy Tech, I know some of you probably have already done this, but if you have never registered for dual credit, um, anybody doing Twin Rivers for the first time next year? All right, when you fill out the application for Ivy Tech, you have to know your social. Whenever I taught Algebra 2A, we always registered for pre-cal for the next year, and like we took a day in class to get everybody ready to go and you wouldn't believe how many people would have to go to the guidance office to get their social. So try to know that. It's not something you should carry around with you because I promise getting your identity stolen is not fun. It, it's a pain. I'm actually a little nervous. Finally, I've my accountant is not done with my taxes yet, but I'm terrified when he goes to file my taxes. Somebody's already filed my taxes under my name because my identity got stolen this year. And they did have my social security number. So, um, not really for sure. They're thinking that my insurance company maybe compromised some information because they tried to file for unemployment. I filed a report. So how does it work? Do you have to get a new social security number? Does I did not have to get a new social security number, but if they had, I got it stopped before a lot started. It's not like they opened credit cards or anything like that. All they did was file for unemployment, which why you would want a teacher's unemployment check is beyond me. Like it would be nothing. Um, it's not really worth stealing. Like if I was going to file for unemployment, I would make sure I'd file under a rich person. But I don't know. But moral of the story is you need to know your social. I didn't know if they gave you like a whole new social security number or not. Because it, doesn't that person know your social? They Does know they my remember? social, but I have like all of my credit is frozen. So like if someone tried to apply for a credit card under my name, it wouldn't let them. And then it... And they actually suggest that you keep that open so they can try to catch them. Because, like, if you shut it off, then they'll never know who it is. Does that make sense? All right, so we have a little bit more to go. So let's go ahead and go to the next page. That is not a 
<laughs> All right, so we are ready to talk about permutations. All right, so a permutation is an arrangement of items in a particular order. An arrangement of items in a particular order. Now you guys can't see that. All right, so I'm going to try to turn the lights out. We're going to see how this works, so that way you guys can see. But with all of these Scrabble tiles, if you were to arrange these, order would matter here. The reason why, if I put this and I'm not even making real words. All right, did I use all five tiles? Okay, so that is one way that you could arrange those tiles. Alright, did I use the same five tiles? But does that make a different fake word? So on this one, order matters. Um, there's sometimes, like whenever you're creating a sandwich, the order doesn't really matter because if you made a sandwich with the same toppings, it's still going to taste the same. So, uh, this one order does, particular orders do matter. And there is a formula to go with this. All right, so on this one, it says how many different textbooks can be arranged on a shelf? All right, so this is where the exclamation points are going to start coming into play. If I have 10 different textbooks to be arranged on a shelf, All right, let's just think about, I put 10 blanks. All right, so if I have 10 books and I'm going to arrange them, how many choices do I have for the first spot? All right, I have 10, but that one, that book is staying. So then how many choices do I have for the second one? All right, so then that book is staying. So how many books do I have to choose from for the third spot? All right, then what do you think is gonna happen? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What was that called whenever we went from 10 all the way to one? Yesterday, if I told you to multiply from 10 and go down all the way to one, what was that called? A 10, and that exclamation point is called a what? It's called a factorial. So then we would simply take 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And you should get 3,628,800. So that's how many different ways you could arrange those. All right, now the second thing, how many ways do you think we can arrange eight different shirts on a hanger? So if we are arranging 10 books with 10 factorial, how many ways do you think we can arrange eight shirts? Yeah, just eight factorial. So you're gonna take eight times seven, six, five, four, three, one. And what do you guys get for eight factorial? Forty thousand three hundred twenty. All right, now. We actually did some practice, um, the practice with factorials. We did stuff like this yesterday. Um, let's just skip, let's review D. 
Uh, don't forget, if you did not turn in that assignment, it is due tonight at midnight. But if we are taking 8 factorial divided by 4 factorial, 8 factorial means we expand 8, correct? Now what does 4 factorial mean? What does 4 factorial mean? 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And in division, if you see the same thing on top and bottom, they do cancel. So we are really just taking 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. Tell me what you get when you're done multiplying that. One thousand six hundred eighty. Now, let me see. Okay, I am not showing you. We can go back to this next page tomorrow. All right, so I do want to talk about this. All right, so it says the drama club has 20 members. And it says, how many ways can you choose a president, a vice president, and a secretary? Dominic, you cannot have that in class. I think that's like, follow the handbook. If it's open, you need to throw it away. All right, so we have 20 members. Now we're going to choose a president a vice president and a secretary. All right, so how many choices do I have for a president? How many members are there? 20. 20. All right, so can I can someone be the president and the vice president? No. no. So if I have 20 choices for a president, how many do I have for a vice president? 19. How many do I have here? All right, so how many, we had 20 members. How many officers did I choose? Three. Three. So if you are picking three choices from 20, the formula actually tells you that it's 20 factorial divided by 17 factorial. Would that make sense? Okay, so 20 minus 3. The formula is actually however many choices you have this is the formula that we will be using. So if you have a group but whenever you're picking the number is less. So like in this one we're picking three choices from 20 so on this one, it was 20 factorial and then 20 minus 3 factorial. So then that takes out, because we're not arranging 20 things, we're only arranging 3 things, so we do have some uh, to divide by. So that is the formula that we will be using. So then we would multiply 20 times 19 times 18, and I can help you with that. When you multiply, that gives us 6,840 ways. All right, so now on this one, I have 35 students, but I have eight chairs in the front row. So how many choices do I have in, how many students do I have in total? All right, so my 35 is my, num my total number. Now how many am I choosing from? So it would be 35 factorial divided by, what's 35 minus 8? And then what that means is you're going to multiply 35 Oh, I forgot 30. And then you stop at 28 because 27 to 1 gets canceled. 
You'll say there's no assignment today, but make sure your assignment from yesterday is turned in.